Well, my name is Libby Chapman and um, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I live in Seattle, Washington. I grew up Presbyterian. I married an Assemblies of God man. And now we've been a part of a couple different denominations. I wouldn't say that I connect to one specific denomination, but more just the umbrella of being a follower of Jesus. And I am a mom to a lesbian daughter. Well, I would say one thing that's been true about my daughter since day one is she's just been full of life. Um, she's, her name means light and um, that's always been true about her. And um, she's also always been a very open book. Like she's the kind of kid you know, um, right? Just exactly where they stand. They, they tell you how they feel and they're very open. Um, and so that she's been a delight to raise in that way. She's my first, my oldest. And so to have a kid who tells you what they're thinking and feeling is such a wonderful thing as a mom. Um, I will say the one thing that was always odd for us um, when she was growing up, and I think it was odd for her too, was she always felt really shy about crushes. She did not want to talk about them. She would talk about her period. She would talk about sex. She, she was very open, but when it came to crushes, she was always really shy about that. And I think we've had some interesting conversations since she's come out about, you know, just understanding that better. I think what I've loved observing about her since she's come out is that I feel like she, her light feels even brighter and there's been this settling into her skin that I've observed kind of coming into her own that I've really loved um, seeing. And um, I'm seeing her take care of herself in a, a deeper way. Yeah, there, there's this, I think there's a sense of self-love that she's been able to embrace that is cause, that's having this ripple effect of health in her whole life. Um, so that has been really amazing. I think when she came out to us, um, one of my the th things I felt because she's been such an open kid, I, I it was such a shock to find out something that I didn't know about her, and um, and so I thought, do I do I even know my child? I felt like it called into question all the the knowledge of her that I thought that I had, and um, of course I learned that that she also didn't know this about herself and that it was sort of this evolving thing that she was coming to understand. She let us in pretty early in the process of thinking this through. And, um, and so I think it was unsettling to, to realize that there was something so big that I didn't know about her. Um, but one of the huge gifts she gave me, she, came out to us during the pandemic when she was a senior in, in high school. And it was the fall of her senior year. And the gift in that was that we had a whole year together before she left for college where we got to go on a lot of coffee dates. And I just got to ask her questions and it was like once she came out, this sort of part of her life that had been sort of, um, she had been uncharacteristically private about then became another place that she just could be herself and we could just hear more about her. Um, so there was a consistency that ended up happening in terms of who we knew her to be, that she kind of returned to being that way um, in, in all the places of her life. So my, my journey to become affirming actually starts back when Ellie was in first grade, um, she came home and told me about some books that were read to her in the library about like, I think they were some guinea pigs that were gay guinea pigs or something like that, guinea pigs in a wedding, something like that. And I was sort of like really surprised that this was coming up in first grade. Now, of course, I'm thinking that there probably were LGBTQ families that were wanting their kids to feel comfortable and 
anyways, but at the time I was really surprised that it was coming up in first grade. And, um, and so I started to kind of do some research and I started thinking, um, well, what am I going to teach my kids? And here's, you know, here's what, what the school is saying. And here's what, kind of what in the background of my Christian upbringing, what I sensed was not okay. And so I wanted to do some research. And so I started, I read a, a book or two and started kind of exploring and all I can say is that it was such an odd experience, but at a certain point, I stopped pursuing God about understanding and I felt like God started pursuing me and things would come across my plate where, um, where I was, you know, a story or a book or something, things just kind of kept coming to me. And I had this sort of internal, I felt compelled and I could not figure it out. I didn't have anybody that I dearly loved that was gay. Um, it was obviously, you know, a, a, a topic in the culture at large and in churches, and I, I knew it was an important thing. But the level of the level of feeling compelled that I felt was really unusual, and it kind of became a joke between my husband and I. Like, you're reading another book. Like, something would come from Amazon, and I'd be like, I know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, I just need to keep learning. And um, and then uh, at a, so I, I became affirming, and then at a certain point, I'm a spiritual director. I don't know if you know what that is, but um, in my in my work, I felt like at a certain point, God said, "I want you to make space for the LGBTQ community in your practice." So, just I, I'm asking you to hold space for this group of people, and um, and so I, I thought, okay, maybe that's why I've been so compelled fast forward to november 2020 and ellie sits down to us over thanksgiving weekend and says um i need to tell you something about myself and tells us that she's a lesbian and i was so surprised it was not even though we were affirming i think i thought because we were affirming that that I know I just thought we would know, or I don't know what I thought. I just thought somehow that that we would we wouldn't have been surprised, but we were really surprised. And um, but the thing I remember from that moment is that I was looking at her, but in my mind's eye, I saw God look at me. And um, I just I saw him wink, and I felt like. Just that feeling of God going before you. Um, just felt like God was so far, so far ahead of me. This thing I didn't know about my girl, but he did. And um, I just feel like the graciousness of God to prompt me to be learning and growing so that I could receive her when she came out. I don't know if I'll ever get over it. It was just such a special moment. I think I felt like I had done a lot of work around deconstruction in my faith and trying to decolonize my faith. And I, I felt like I had been really proactive. And I've kind of been surprised how this journey with my daughter still brings up areas where I want control or I want certainty or I want stability. And it's almost like I feel like I'm off-roading with God and it feels it's a bumpy ride sometimes and so um yeah i think i if i would have thought what i would be like in the situation i think i would have thought like oh i've already done all this work it'll just be so easy and i've still found it to be pressing on these places in me where um where you feel vulnerable and you feel uncertain and you feel um worried and you know things like that so that's probably been um, a little bit of a surprise. I, I wasn't taught um, explicitly to not be affirming of the LGBTQ community, but it was sort of something that was in the water. I think um, in church when I was growing up, um, and um, so I didn't have as much to unpack probably, but I had a lot of um, Fear, I would say, was probably the, the big thing I felt. I felt a lot of fear about um, 
just from just from not having a lot of exposure and I had a lot of stereotypes I had to work through. Um, I also think um, that that the Bible was really important, is really important to me. And um, and so I had to do quite a bit of work to relook at some of those scriptures and explore um, how there's other perspectives and how to interpret things. Um, and all of that took a number of years. Um, and I would say it was, it was a mixture of um, looking at, at theology, doing a lot of studies um, and reading books on theology, but also borrowing stories. There's so many um, amazing stories, um, LGBTQ Christians who have shared their stories. I remember I read, I think the first thing I read was Torn by Justin Lee. And, um, and then I've read a number of things since then. I remember I listened to a podcast called Blue Babies Pink. Um, um, with B.T. Harmon, and that was a story that I borrowed. Um, and um, so I kind of kept toggling back and forth between stories and theology, and just over time, felt like the Spirit just showed me um, a different perspective than, than what I had. I think um, one of the things that was interesting about being affirming when when our daughter came out is that I think I thought I, I, I hadn't thought about it being a possibility for her, that she was gay <laughs> first of all. But but if I had if I had if I had thought it was a possibility, I think that I would have pictured us just being all in and having no difficult emotions. And that actually wasn't the case. Like, I think um, we still, even though we were affirming, we still felt some grief. And I, I've described it like if if your child came to you and said, we're not gonna have biological kids, we're gonna adopt, that is a beautiful path, but it still requires letting go of maybe something you pictured. And, um, and so that we felt that. We felt like, oh, we hadn't even realized what we had pictured and now that it wasn't going to be the case, that it was going to look different. So there was, there was grief, there was feeling, you know, like, do we even know her? There's feelings of uncertainty about who is this, this, our girl that we thought we knew so well that we obviously have new things to learn about her. So there was uncertainty and that felt uncomfortable. Um, there was also fear. There was a lot of fear. Um, I think just how would her life be more difficult for this being the case? And, you know, her dad and I want her, I mean, she, she loves God and we want her to continue to feel like she can belong within the family of God. And so I think that was probably like the thing I've shed the most tears about, the thing I felt most scared about was, will the church make it hard for her to continue to follow God and find belonging? And so, I think there was a lot of fear. Um, not everybody in our family is affirming. And so we've had to navigate some difficult conversations. We're actually just beginning to, to work through some of those, um, those difficult conversations and, and um, trying to give people time to, to journey on this, but also trying to be protective and to have boundaries. Um, it's kind of, it's complicated. Um, so, um, those have been some of the feelings that I've experienced as I've journeyed with her the last year and a half. So even though I've done a lot of work to be, come affirming, there's still lots of things that I am uncertain about. I'm still journeying. I think it's a journey that you never stop learning and growing and being curious. And, um, but one of the things that I've just kept coming back to again and again is this idea of love, that God is love, that the greatest command is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so that has been, um, sometimes we can get caught up in the six verses in the Bible that are confusing and that we, that we need to take a look at to reinterpret. But whenever I get confused, I just have found 
the concept of God being love and inviting us to love to be really anchoring. Um, I also think about what I see modeled in the person of Jesus as being Emmanuel, God with us. And I, I always think about him being at the table, sharing a meal with the tax collectors and sinners and being in the middle of the mess of all of that and, and being willing to journey with people and um, being willing to let it be messy. And so I have found that concept of Emmanuel and that um, God is with us, God's with my daughter, and then I get to be with her in the same way that he is with me to, to be powerful in my faith. It's really tempting to be afraid, to feel afraid, but I've really found trying to shift my fear to curiosity to be a helpful turn internally for me from fear to curiosity. And um, I think that I would encourage parents who are beginning this journey with their kids to say to them, I may not know what I think about all these different things, but I'm willing to take a journey with you. I love you. I'm willing to take a journey with you. I'm willing to, to be curious instead of afraid and um, that God will go before you.